And I tell people all the time in our closet, if I could only afford one grill, one smoker, one cook or barbecue cooker, this would be it. If that was all I could have was one, this would be the one, because it does it all. The window of perfection on hot and fast is very, very narrow. If you're cooking at 300 degrees, you come check your brisket and it's at 190, and you're thinking, okay, I'll be back in 15 minutes. You come back in 15 minutes and it's at 210. You might have already overcooked it, way overcooked. Generally, if you're cooking low and slow and you poke it and it's 190, you got an hour, a window of about an hour to get it perfect. There's an old saying uh, in barbecue cooking that if you're looking, you're not cooking. Try to keep that lid closed as much as possible. Every time you open it, you add another four, five, 10 minutes to your cooking time. So the, long, the more you keep your lid closed, the sooner you're gonna get done cooking. The general rule of thumb is, if you're cooking on a pit that the fire's on the bottom, you wanna put the fat toward the bottom. I personally like the meat side up because I work real hard to get my rub on there and make it look even and pretty. I think the rub adds the, that extra little bark and flavor to the briskets. When you wrap it with the fat side up and then you get all the juice on the bottom, it kind of washes a lot of your spices away. It doesn't normally affect the flavor. It's still gonna taste wonderful, but you don't have that nice, crusty, pretty little bark. Today we're uh, doing the uh, South Tex Outdoor Kitchens slash Arnie Tex Backyard Brisket class. We're gonna teach people first how to trim their brisket. They're also going to have their own brisket that we're giving them, and they're gonna get to trim it right here with us. So that's what's going on today. So I just ran a little indirect fire over here, brisket on this side. About halfway through the cook, you wanna rotate your brisket about 180 degrees. Three, four hours into it, you wanna put it into a pan, put a little bit of beef broth, a little bit of water in there, just to keep it moist. You wanna make sure you have plenty of liquid in there. Y'all saw me with that little uh, uh, cup with the water in it. I added a little bit more water. What you wanna do at least once, halfway through your cook, is rotate your brisket 180 degrees so that you get nice, even cook all the way from one end to the other. You may have a hot spot on one side or one corner or on one end and not the other. So when you rotate the brisket all the way around, that gives you nice even cooking all the way around too. I like to poke mine right about the middle right there and about halfway in. So I like mine right in the middle because that's gonna give me a little bit of an average what the whole brisket's gonna be like. You know, one side will be a little colder than the other. Let's go back inside and get the class part part of it and uh, let's have some fun. Y'all go ahead. I like to trim as much fat as I can off of the top part of the point here. This is the actual point. Everybody see that? So I'm exposing the meat right here on the point. This is the point, it goes all the way around and under the flat. I like to trim the fat off of here so that when I season the whole brisket, I get a little bit of my rub on here, a little bit of uh, flavor. So when the brisket's done, and y'all see that here in a little while, I cut this off first on both sides. If it has it on both sides, sometimes it's just on one and then we'll cut that up for burning, or it'll be nice, thick, delicious, wonderful slices. And you see how I just, I don't go sawing back and forth. It usually works better if you give it a nice, long stroke like that, like you're slicing. I'm getting rid of some more of that brown meat stuff. One thing you gotta have a lot of when you're cooking brisket, you gotta be patient, man. You just gotta let the brisket cook. It's ready when it's ready. It's done when it's done. Because we've all had those parties, right? And everybody shows up and, where's the food? I'm hungry now. I mean, the minute they get there, they're hungry now, right? We'll start early, guys. Brisket takes time. If you gotta cook it overnight, figure out a way to use your cooker to cook it overnight or get up at four in the morning. And the rest is really, really important uh, for brisket. Uh, pretty much any meat. The longer you rest your brisket, the better. What happens is, I call it, rehydrates. The longer it sits there, the, the brisket, as it cools off, it starts to suck the water, the moisture. So what's in that moisture? It's just pure flavor. You know, everything that's in your aju gets sucked back into the meat and it just tastes fantastic. There's no exact right way to inject either. And if your brisket is a little colder, like mine is today, just go ahead and, and um, slow down your, your trigger or your fingers if you're using the other style. When I do this at home, I make sure the air condition's off so that um, it just lays nice and even straight across the brisket. And I just put a little bit of rub on the bottom. I don't spread it, I don't slather it. I usually just pat it down nicely like that. Okay. Yeah, see how, how fat that is? That's like a little too much. I'm gonna take some of that off. Taking off some of that will reduce the size and it cooks a little quicker too. 
I like to make my first cut right there where the fat is so I don't ruin my meat. I usually cut it there or over there, and then just run it across the top and then pull the brisket out so that the, all the blood stays on the bottom and we just throw that away. Yeah, aquí you can kind of un poquito más derecho para abajo. Yeah, I would probably like pick it up and dig in a little bit more. You don't have to, but I do it because I want to use these as, as that burnt in. Because those taste really, really good. It's like a big fat under there. This one's pretty thin. I wouldn't mess with that one. I'd leave like it that? there. Yeah, because it's just going to add more moisture and, I, and flavor. Now you want to flip it over and, and cut some of this fat off right here. Okay. Take a little bit off. And just right there? Or? Yeah, what I was going to say, don't poke it all the way through. Just try to go slow through the meat about halfway in. You see how it's starting to feel soft? It doesn't feel hard or resistant. It just goes in nice and That bridge gets done. I took it all the way down to 245 because it's done, done. There we go. I'm gonna let that sit there just a little bit longer. Please, thank you. Coming through. Coming through. Batula, man, this is the best tool out there for brisket and Pork butt. I mean the best. There ain't nothing better out there. Stick it in here. Slide it underneath. There's a big brisket. Boom. There you go. They say if it jiggles, it wiggles, it's good. So that's what we were shooting for and we looked like we did it. This is where those really wonderful burn ins come from. Right here. So I think at the end of the day, really it's more prep, technique, and cooking process as far as producing a really wonderful, juicy, tasty brisket. Nah, y'all don't want them. <laughs> oh man, that's good. That's really good. This one was the Sucker Buster Brisket Rub and SPG. Now a lot of these, uh, what you can do is, is sauce them again, toss them in the pan a little bit, put them back on the cooker, let the sauce sit on them, and we call that candy, brisket candy. Nice and juicy, perfectly done where it's still moist, not dried out. <laughs> At the end of the day, there's a saying that, that says, know your heat and know your meat. So you need to really intimately know your barbecue pit, how much charcoal it takes. So I put a layer of those on the bottom and then I put those char logs, the round ones. Then I'll put a layer of these on top and then I put the, uh, the rock wood. Now that's the way I did it because it was gonna be an all night wonderful little cooker. We actually used this uh, last week at a competition by itself and we cooked all three categories and then we won a grand champion with it. So super pumped, super proud of my little hasty bake here. It gets the job done. This is an awesome little cooker. And I tell people all the time in our classes, if I could only afford one grill, one smoker, one cooker, barbecue cooker, this would be it. If that was all I could have was one, this would be the one, because it does it all. A lid that's easy to open and close. Uh, this adjusts your grade up and down, so you can do steaks, you can do fajitas, you can grill chicken, whatever you want to grill. And if you want to smoke low and slow, like I did that brisket overnight, just Make yourself a little indirect fire and, and, and let everything come up. Great little cooker. I'm very, very, very happy with mine. <laughs>